When I try to operate the window, I can hear the motor operate, but there's a bit of a crunching noise and of course the window doesn't move. And those symptoms suggest that the uh, window regulator is broken inside the door. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the door card here so that you can access the existing window regulator and use a window regulator repair kit to replace the broken cable. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative terminal from the battery. Okay, so there's a few things to take off of the front of the door so that we can get to screws that are behind and holding this door card on. And the first of them is this, which is just the little airbag sign. So this just needs to be pried off. But I'm going to come back to these screws later once I've got all the little pieces of trim off. And you just need to pop that disc out because there's another screw behind there. There you go. Okay, so next up is there's a couple of screws behind this door handles and what you'll find is you can actually feel the edge of it underneath the bottom edge there and that gives you a purchase with your fingers. And so as you can see, I just pop that off at the bottom and now I can go ahead and gently work my way up. And there's a couple of screws hiding behind the handle. Okay, so next up we've got this little triangular cover which has the little tweeter speaker in it to remove. And the easiest way to remove this is to just to grab that edge nearest the window because again you can just get your fingers in there and then just gently pull outwards on it. And this speaker has a little blue electrical connection there which you can see. And all you have to do is pull up on that. Okay, so now it's time to take all of those screws out. So these are T20. There's one at the top there and one at the bottom here. And if the screws don't come straight out once they're loosened then a little uh, magnet on a stick usually does the trick. Moving on there's another T20 behind the door opener just here so we can whiz that out. And of course the screw that was behind this little airbag uh, badge here. Okay so we're ready to lift the door card off now and what you're best doing is grabbing the bottom of the door card and pulling that away first. So now you can see this is completely loose at the bottom and now what I find uh, works best is if you grab along the top, starting from the left hand side and then working your way across, just pull directly away from the door. And it's worth mentioning that sometimes it takes quite a bit of force in order to pull this top edge off of those clips. And there's a cable connection here which is going from the uh, door handle. And what you'll find is this cable is really easy to disconnect on the side where it goes to the actual uh, door latch. And all you have to do is pull down slightly on it here and then move it out of that clip that it's in. And then this top toggle part, you just turn it off to the side and then it comes off. So these are the two electrical connections which do the electric uh, window and also the electric mirror on this side. And the first one should just pull out quite easily, just like that. But this one's quite an unusual clip because what you have to do is push down on that tab and then this lever you just move past the tab once you've pushed it down. And now what you'll find as you continue to move that lever, it'll actually eject the connection. We need to remove this. So it's best to remove it carefully if you can without ripping it all up. Now this, this one's actually been off before, so it's probably stuck on a bit differently to what yours will be if you've never touched it. But basically, um, mine's just got some sealing around the edges. So I'm just going to go around and carefully, you know, undo it with my fingers. So this here is actually your airbag and it's just held on by these three 10 millimeter bolts. Now obviously this is going to have to come off of the inside of the door for us to get this uh, soundproofing foam off and to give us the access we need behind. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these three 10 millimeter nuts undone. It's worth mentioning that even with your battery disconnected, if you unplug this airbag, you may result in an airbag light. So can you see this little edge of the clip here where you just pull out on that and then the same at the other side. My airbag light didn't come on, so I was able just to put this all back together again and put the battery back on once I'd finished without any issues. Okay, so with that airbag out of the way, I'm just gonna move this foam. So all of this mechanism that you can see here that the uh, window motor is mounted to and also the black frame is all known as the window regulator. So to remove this, there's five screws. One, two, three, four. And then a fifth one that's just hidden underneath here. 
So there's a little oval cover under there on the bottom of the door and you pop that loose to get to the screws and you'll notice there's two of them. Well, it's actually this left one, which is the one that's nearest the door hinges. And so there's just a 10 millimeter knot under there. So I'm just gonna get my socket onto that. So with the awkward one underneath done, we can turn our attention to the ones on the inside of the door, starting with this one on the top right, just here. Moving along to the one just above the motor. And then finally this one at the bottom. Okay, so that's all the bolts that hold the uh, BMW window regulator in place. So I'm just gonna pop through any studs that are showing through the steel, which is pretty much anywhere where we just took off the nuts. So you probably noticed my window failed in the up position. But now it means I have to get this window down a little bit because there's a, um, a torque screw at one side which holds the uh, glass to the um, window regulator and at the other side there's a clip and I need to get that down far enough that I can get access to them. Which means I'm going to put the airbag back on temporarily and the power back on and just see if I can get the window to come down a little bit. And I'm just going to pop that back on and connect it up just a little bit at a time and the key thing is I'm waiting for a bolt that's on the runner to come down and be visible through this hole okay so there it is there and you can see it through this little hole so you can see you have access to that now and that's how you um, unfasten the glass of the window from the window regulator and now I'm going to reach in and undo that screw Here's the clip at the other side. So it's just there and you just need to pry that out. Now all you have to do is wiggle the white plastic slider until you can make it slide free of the black frame. Okay, and now it's actually easiest to get this uh, window regulator out um, if the glass is back up. And what you can actually do is um, lift the glass up and at a certain point it'll tilt towards you and it'll almost balance in that position really and you can just leave it angled there so we just have a final thing to disconnect and then we can go ahead and uh, remove the window regulator and that's the electrical connection to the window motor and this is a squeeze type so you just squeeze at the back and then you should be able to slide that off of the uh, wiper motor and now you can go ahead and uh, remove the uh, window regulator finally and you can kind of tackle it in two pieces really. So the first piece is um, the bit that's got the motor on it. And actually you can probably see the problem I've got with my window here, which is a broken cable on it. And now we can get the second half. It's hard to show this with it being behind the door piece, but there's a little clip behind here, which is holding the cables to the window regulator. So you literally just reach under and there's just a little clip and it was just keeping these cables tidy and so there you are that's the uh, BMW window regulator removed the symptoms from mine was when I operated the window then I heard a pop and uh, if you hear that popping noise I think it's safe to assume that you're going to need a repair kit but anyway my uh, kit is quite a simple one it costs about uh, 20 to 25 pounds so I suppose that's 30 to 35 dollars so I'm going to start at this end. So the end of this uh, cable has a little uh, end on it that fits inside uh, this mechanism here. And there's actually a little spool. I got a replacement uh, one in my kit, but these, um, as you can see, slot into there. But what I'll need to do is um, remove the motor off of here and then access that so that I can anchor in what I'm calling the start of the uh, cable section. And then I'll work my way around. So uh, this motor is held on by three Torx screws and these are T30. So just a little bit of gentle prying should get the uh, motor off. 
So the problem we've got is um, we need to put this new uh, end of the cable around the wheel, which is what I mentioned a minute ago, but we can't access the wheel which is inside there unless we pop this cover off. Now this cover is held on by these five rivets, you know, and they're not just a screw I can undo. Now I was hopeful that it would just pop off, but they don't seem inclined to. And um, what I don't want to do is to break uh, this cover. And so what I thought I'd try in the first instance is a, um, a countersink just to take that top edge off. Anyway, that's done it. So let's have a little look see. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now and we can see the wheel. And of course, um, what we want to do is get our new cable in there. But can you see this piece here? Well, that shouldn't be there. And can you see these straggly ends? Well, it should be possible to lift this wheel out and wind in my new cable end. But it's all jammed at the moment. I can just see it all peeping around the edges here. So I'm going to go grab some grips and that should free off this wheel. Let's just see if I can get under this bottom edge. Ah, oh, here we go, finally. And it is slightly different top and bottom. So you can see that's just chamfered ever so slightly. And this is the side that has the drive for the motor on it. So you need to make sure that goes back in uh, the right way again. Now down in here, all of that brown that you can see is old grease. And so I'm going to um, clean the old grease out of there and apply some new. And what I like to use is just a silicone grease. This one doesn't say silicone on it, but Dow Corning's a good brand of silicone grease. So that's that end sorted, which corresponds to that one. Nothing I can do about this thing. Work my way along and Seems like there's a little clip here which holds it to the back of the door or the inside of the door. So we'll transfer that. And then this pops off here. I'll just snip that away to make it a little bit easier. So now at this end, we know that this little fitting pushes on and it goes into there. So I just opened the gap ever so slightly just to get that cable down into there. This next part's worth showing you a little bit more uh, closely. So this is our cable which we've fed round the wheel at the bottom. But now this section you can see is just a straight section of cable before we get to the next part at the top. But it has this, um, it's like a little kind of crimped on piece. But effectively it sits in there. So, so this one needs to come out. But what I tend to do is I sometimes wind the cable around and that just gives you a little bit of leverage. And now this thing needs to drop in there. Well, it went in pretty well, to be honest. So now this cable, we're following it along, the old one. And this piece we can just pop off here. And this corresponds to this uh, new one that we've got. And it's a bit similar to the other one where it just needs a little bit of encouragement uh, to get it past that edge. There we go. Obviously that nip point is to stop the cable coming back out again. So following this along, we can see the next destination for our cable is here at this bottom corner. And we've got another one of these uh, which we had earlier. So it should be possible to locate it on the new uh, cable. And here it is. So we know that this end uh, feeds into here and then this piece goes onto there. So we're just threading it to go around this wheel. Oh, there we go. And then we know this piece goes into here. So we're starting to get there now. So what I've discovered quite late in the game is that this piece here plays a bit of a role of getting that uh, cable in easily. So if you just feed it into that. then it helps you get that cable in without having to do any levering. Okay, so we're finally back round to the beginning and this is the final connection. And then we'll have to play around with this wheel, of course. But before I assemble it all, I just want to make sure that this is working nice and smoothly. So what I'm gonna do is just um, put a little bit of silicone grease down in there. 
And when I insert this, it'll carry the grease down. Now I might as well uh, clean this up. And by the way, WD-40 is a really good cleaner. It's not as good a lubricant as everybody thinks it is. So don't rely on WD-40 to lubricate this mechanism for you because it just won't last. All right, let's give that another try. You just have to make sure that the teeth are on the same side as the teeth on that. So now we can look to assemble that into this piece. And there's not a special end just here. It literally just fits into the back of that. There we go. And you, you actually feel it slide home. Before we go any further, we need to tension up these springs that you can see here. So the solution I came up with is to use tie wraps to do this job. So what you need is one tie wrap in a small loop at the cable end and another tie wrap in a small loop on the other side of the white fitting and then a tie wrap that links the two and when you tension that up it'll compress the spring and that'll give you the cable length that you need later to wind around the reel. And now we just need to repeat the process with the other spring where the cable returns back to the central reel. So I'm going to start with what I'm referring to as the bottom cable. And I call it the bottom cable because this is the final position for the reel and the bottom one goes on the uh, bottom side so you insert it vertically like that, the toggle. And then you can see which way the cable's going to go because it's leading that direction already and you just wrap it around a couple of times until you've used up all the slack basically. Now this one's the uh, the top cable and we're ready to get it started now. And again, you know, I call it the top cable because this is how the um, disc is gonna finish. And this is where the toggle inserts. So I'm just gonna get that wrapped around a couple of times. And now this is the point where you're gonna want to check all of these because you need all of the slack you can get. Okay, so this is the position you want to end up in. So the the reel's upside down. You've got two turns on both cables and they're uh, correctly in their grooves. This is the final uh, tension that you're going to put on it. And so what you need to do is a final twist to get it the right way up. Like that. And now the tricky part is it has to go down into there. Again, go and check all of these. Make sure these are all fully tensioned. There's one of these just off screen um, that's popped out just a little bit. So I'm just gonna sort that and you'll see that I get a bit more here. There we go. And that's absolutely crucial, you see. And so now it's just a case of squeezing it into there and it does take quite a bit of effort. Now, this is really important as well is because I started with the cables in the right position because I knew I was gonna spin it then this cable, which I'm calling the top cable because it's this one, is actually on top. If you get that backward, then they'll be effectively crossing each other there and they'll bind. Now this reel looks like it's down, but it's not. Can you see this big gap here? Well, you need to um, push the reel that way until you hear it pop into place. And the best way you can do it is just push firmly here with your thumb. There you go. Okay, so now it's time to reattach the cable mechanism to the backing plate. And if you remember before, we drilled out the rivets which was holding it together. So now what I'm using are some eight millimeter countersunk screws and slimline nuts on the other side to reattach it. I'm just gonna put a little dab of Loctite on these screws and that'll make sure that they don't come undone. Now that you've got that all secured, um, you can go ahead and release the, uh, the tension uh, on these um, springs. Okay, so we're finally ready to put the motor back on and then we can go ahead and install it. And uh, the motor only really goes in in one position uh, because of the offsets on these screws. So you just need to line that up and it has little splines on the shaft there. There we go. And so now we just hold the position of that and we can flip it over. And that makes it a bit easier to go ahead and get these um, screws put back in. Well, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this um, silicone grease along those.
By the way, you may have noticed that these didn't pop out very much with the spring tension. These cables are brand new at the moment, um, but what happens is over time they stretch, but hopefully there'll be enough travel on the springs to keep tension on these cables and make it work for a long time. I'll just show you these adjustment screws here. So hopefully you won't have to touch them, but if you do, let's say your um, window's not going up fully or it's uneven down a little bit on one side, then these are the adjustment screws for that. Refitting the BMW window regulator is not the exact opposite of removal. It's a little bit tricky to get the frame in and then also getting the glass back onto the guides again. So I'm going to show the uh, reassembly process rather than stopping the video at this point and I think it will be valuable to you. Okay, so just feeding this window regulator in now. Just remember that this screw's in place at the moment and it's got the window bracket on it. And so what I'm going to have to do later is remove that, take this um, bracket apart, put it onto the glass and reassemble it again. So it's worth mentioning that all of this window regulator mechanism has to be this side of the glass. So it has to be up against this inner door skin and the glass is on the other side. Don't accidentally tuck the uh, regulator around the back side of the glass because you won't be able to fit it in place. So I've got this bottom uh, stud lined up here. So I'm just going to put the nut back on and at this stage I'm just doing it finger tight. And now if we pan up a little bit. There's another one just here. And then there's a final one at the top here. So the right hand uh, side is just laid across the bottom at the moment and we know we need to get it round and up. So that's on at the top. Now the bottom one that's just down here, just inside, you remember the one that I said we access from underneath? That one's actually on a slot. So you can move this regulator frame in and out. So later on it's going to be important to find the correct position for that. But for now I'm just going to put the nut on the bottom. Now we're ready to put the glass back onto the window regulator. And so we need to put the power back on briefly so that when we reach through we can get to the screw. It's just a little bit low at the moment down in there. If you don't have a reset tool for the airbag then you'll want to pop the uh, plug back on the uh, airbag and then just attach it in place temporarily. And now I'm going to reach in and undo that screw. And this is probably now one of the trickiest parts of the job because this is the uh, front plate and that's the back one. And so I have to line the whole of, of the glass up with this and then um, sandwich this together and it has a little boss there can you see and that lines up with the hole as well and then all of this is at the back of the metal that you could see in there and the screw goes through and it secures against this back plate you see in fact can you see how that clipped through there that effectively kind of holds it all in place which allows you to get the screw in so uh, in order to disassemble this you just squeeze that slightly and then I'm going to feed this piece in and hopefully onto the hole in the glass, on the front side of the glass. Anyway, it'll take some messing around, but eventually you'll get um, the runner on the other side in place. And then you'll be able to line up uh, this bracket here so that then you can get this bolt back in. So I got that clamp on the right hand side and it's just kind of hanging there because that little clip that holds it in place is doing its job but before i can line it up then i need to uh, get this left hand side on and you can see this piece here well it just um, slides into the runner so that black runner there the white piece slides inside it so you have to kind of line that up And now we can go ahead and tighten this one up. And then don't forget at this side you need to get this clip back in. And I'm just going to tighten up the rest of the way the nuts that hold the window regulator in place. And what I just did by moving the window up and down a few times is I just made sure the glass 
ran nicely down the middle of this rubber. And what you can do is if your glass isn't sitting in the middle of the rubber, say it's come this side and it's actually running down this face, then you can move the window to the fully down position and you can just access that little corner there. And if you get in carefully with a screwdriver, you can just pull back that leading edge and you can feed the glass into the middle. And then as you run the, uh, the glass up, then you can make it um, go into the um, seal like it should. Now if you remember me saying the bottom of the window regulator on the right hand side, it's slotted so it can move. Well looking down inside, because it's a little bit dirty inside, I can see where that bracket used to sit. And it's about there. So literally I'm just going to get underneath with my socket and just tighten that nut up. So we're getting this door card ready to go back on and I bought a small pack of the clips uh, because I broke a couple. I'll put a link to the part number in the uh, description of the video uh, in case you find you break a couple. So the ones that I lost were down here. So I'll just pop one of these on ready. And then just up here as well. We've just got our foam to put in place. This stuff is really sticky, that's on the back of it still. And most of it came off onto the foam. So uh, I'm just gonna be able to press this back into place again. And now we can go ahead and screw the airbag back into place. And don't forget the electrical connection to it. And now we're ready to get our door card on. So you can probably just see this, this little clip here. Well, um, that one, um, it literally pushes straight onto it. Before I go any further, I'm going to make sure that these uh, controllers for the electric windows are where I need to get them. And now I'm just going to work my way around anywhere where there's one of these little clips. Starting from this top left position and then just working around the door card. And because these things are on slots on the door card, they don't always line up with the hole that's in the door perfectly. So what it's worth doing as you're working your way around and it involves a bit of laying on the ground is just looking up with a light and making sure that you're lining up with the holes properly. Two screws in the handle. I will just fit this cover here and it is profiled slightly this cover but there's a little slot so it can only go back in in one position so you can't really get it wrong there we go so this one actually um there's little slots at this top edge and so what you do is you um slot it under at the top and then everywhere else it just pushes in place next up the electric window um connections remembering that on the larger one this lever comes over this other one's a more conventional one, where it just goes in one position really. So you have to get this uh, back edge under first. Do it nice and even top and bottom. Next up we have the little uh, tweeter. And this end's kind of fixed to the bodywork, so all you have to do is push this in. So this is a bit of a strange design, this one. So this back edge has a bit of an edge on it. So you have to get it behind the back edge of the rubber there. And then this one just pushes directly into place. And then finally, there's a little screw that goes behind the uh, airbag fitting. And then this thing just pushes in place. And just make sure you get your battery negative terminal nice and tight. Hopefully this video helped you. And if it did, then please consider giving me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to make sure you get to see my next video. And finally, if you want to see more videos just like this one, then why not check out the recommended videos on the right. Okay, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.